Hold him. Now you listen to me, you hillbilly punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat! <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it so. Kyrie, the earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So, whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Casting straight to you from a large spaceship currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. And this is not a rerun. You know, let's let's just get into that right now. It is actually July 4th, and I may be the only person broadcasting on July 4th live. I, everybody else is probably out at a barbecue. But I am not. I haven't done a July 4th thing in quite some time for various reasons. So anyway, let's get back to it, shall we? I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which proposed that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. And let's see. Amer- America's brick exit. Nice. Uh, check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, that's because you're distracted by the Metabunk explanation of the satellite that went down in Brazil saying that it was part of Google Loon, which I agree. It was part of Google Loon, but it does raise a whole bunch more questions. For those of you listening to this on YouTube, you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. If you are listening to this and it is not the night of July 4th, well, it's a rerun. So you can call in, but the call is going to go to my voicemail, which is fine. I'll still I'll still get to it eventually, but you're not going to be able to talk to me live, and we will take calls tonight. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery is... If you stop and think about it, the form of propulsion used today hasn't changed in over a thousand years since the invention of fireworks by the Chinese. And that's by Peter Diamandis. And I've got two backup quotes still. So next week, don't think of a quote, Peter Calorie, because I've still got two backup quotes. One from Ernest Rutherford and one from Paul Durek. Uh, Jeffrey Grubb debate challenge blah 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 if anyone wants to come up against flat earth from the academic field I, I this thing's just gathering dust I don't even know how much longer I, I mean it's, seriously if somebody comes out against Jeffrey Grubb now I Jeffrey I'll call him up and Jeff be like what what what, what? <laughs> seriously the big money challenge though is still in effect I think it's like 25k or higher you can contact Kathy Dunson for details her email address is perilandra P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com. D-I-T-R-H, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, is doing a billboard that is going up near the conference center. Go fund me a stranger's guide to Flat Earth Billboard, or F-E Billboard. It's going to be up September, October, November. At at November, it's going to be a printed billboard. We can send people to stand under it with Flat Earth signs when we are there. Going to be a biblical conference called, you can check it out at takeontheworld17.com. And I mentioned that because Rob Skiba, who is also on this network, will be representing 
Flat Earth at that event. Another person on this network, Zen Garcia, is going to be doing uh, the Danoon Institute of Biblical Research Summer 2017 Conference, where he is going up against Dr. Stephen Pigeon. And they're going to be talking Flat Earth versus Globe. It's going to be moderated by Stephen and Jana Danoon of Israeli News Live. So cool. That's fantastic. Phone calls, phone calls. Let's give out the number, shall we? Phone number to call in. There's two numbers. There's a number and there's a backup number. So the number that I've been giving you for, oh, 110 shows, roughly, is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Or you can call the show direct, which is 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998. Both numbers go to the same place, which is me, which is fine. I don't mind at all. Um, what else? Let's dedicate the show tonight to my very special friend and co-host of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, Patricia, because she just finished a long week of shooting with the documentary team and doing a meetup with a bunch of people and dealing with pros and cons. So good for her. She stuck it out and she didn't snap which is fantastic in my opinion. Peanut Gallery is online. Everything's good. And because it's July 4th, and honestly, I didn't expect that many people to be around. People are probably out watching fireworks right now. Why are you listening to me? So I have emails while we wait. And so Peanut Gallery cannot complain about this because, well, hey. And I actually get some good emails. The first one, and I'll, be, I'll, I'll break in. I, I, won't, I, won't, uh, I won't cut you guys off. So you guys can, uh, we can talk tonight. The first one's going to be from Derek, and it's called, I Cannot Believe I Am Saying This. Mark, my journey began two years ago when I worked for Lockheed Martin. I will not say the location, but I was around a lot of engineers and very knowledgeable people that were at the top of their fields. One gentleman that I had met had and had many conversations. One day we were discussing lock and leave missiles. I have to say that before this point, I had never thought of the Earth other than a sphere. I, like everyone else in the world, believed without a doubt that what we learned in school was fact. I very innocently asked how this worked. I brought up the curve of the Earth and locked onto something that was beyond the line of sight, was beyond the capabilities of any radar. He just smiled and gave me a very simple statement. I will give you $100 if you can prove the Earth is a sphere. Now, I'm a veteran of 22 years. I have held top secret clearances, served my country with honor and respect. I am stating this because I am not easily swayed. I was raised a Baptist in the Midwest and have been a typical hypo-Christian my whole life. I've never heard that term before, hypo-Christian. My friend knew that I was going to find what I was going to find. Hence, the smirk on his face when he gave me the challenge. He knew that I would not stop until I proved him wrong. Well, here I am accepting defeat. I am a flat earther. I never thought, I know, oh, I'm sorry, I have never brought this up with anyone but my brother and my father. I got them involved because I needed a different perspective, mainly because I could not believe that the whole world was told this as fact. I have never been a conspiracy believer and am not sure I am. But the two things that prove the flat earth without a doubt in my mind and to me should convince anyone with any reasonable mind and intelligence are, one, the curvature, eight inches per mile squared. This is irrefutable. Two, no matter how high you go, the horizon is at high level. To me, anyone with half a brain should realize this. We have all been fed a theory that has never been proven. I can say without any doubt that we have never landed on the moon. We have not sent anything past the Van Allen belt. I think it has all been staged to facilitate the illusion of being the biggest power on this earth. We had to show the Russians up. Now the United States is about to be exposed to one of the greatest tricks ever pulled off. They fooled the world. I think that the few that got high enough know that the earth is not a sphere. I have read Genesis in the Bible many times and thought it was all told in symbolism and stories. But I now know that it is written literally. It is confirmed that this world was created. It has cemented my faith in God. I can only hope it does the same for others. I do think that the U.S. had good intentions, 
when this all began, but after time, the lie keeps getting perpetrated. Having to keep the illusion going to save face and not tarnish the reputation of the United States was paramount. But all lies create bigger lies, and over time, lies always seem to be exposed. I do believe the lie is about to end. I cannot tell you how much the Flat Earth community has opened my eyes. Mark, you made the journey palatable. <laughs> palatable, I've never heard that one either. In reference to me. I have watched hundreds of videos. Dubai, ODD, Globusters, Skiba, and not just pro, but con videos. The con videos always fall flat. Oh, I see what you did there. To the po two points that are irrefutable. My eyes are open. Thank you, Mark. What you are doing is important. Keep it flat. Uh, and then he gives his uh, handle. So it's fantastic. Thank you, man. It's, it's appreciated and uh, a very sincere letter. So, great. Phone number to call in, 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. And get remember, we got the new phone system, so we should be darn near bulletproof. Notice how I said darn and not damn. I try to be more, you know, PC. Okay, let's see what we got here. This one's called Greetings from Boston. Dear Mr. Sergeant, absolutely fascinating and a little bit unsettling, of course. I'm going to let all of this settle in and continue to explore. However, in the meantime, I do have three initial questions that perhaps you might answer or direct me to a resource. One, how would the sun's orbit work? If the sun is going around the Earth like a dial on a clock flatwise, how would it appear to rise? How would the American continent be in complete darkness when the sun is over, say, Southeast Asia, if the Earth is flat? Do we have a model of this? How do the seasons work? I, instead of trying to explain this again, I, I know he's kind of new to this. I reference at least two or three different channels. One, you can reference Jaronism. You can reference Rob Skiba. You can reference DITRH. You can reference Zeteticism.com. Just type in Flat Earth Sun. You'll find it. Two, regarding those nuclear weapons that the Soviets and the United States sent up after discovering something, what, the dome? To do what? Break the barrier? What exactly did they explode? Wouldn't there have been nuclear fallout? Yeah, yeah, of course. But remember, fallout is also related to the amount of material you're kicking up in the air. Uh, fallout is a lot more severe if you're sucking up a bunch of the ground into it. You know, radioactive, hence fallout. It, it gets sucked up and then falls back down like radioactive rain, like radioactive dust and chunks and crap but if it's just an airburst eh, not as much i mean it's raw radiation sure but it's not falling now what it's doing up there who knows uh three also my father was a fighter pilot he used to tell me that his flight path from europe to the east coast would bring him all the way up near greenland i always thought that was odd and said so and he would respond by saying because of the curve of the earth and the height of the flight path it's actually a more direct route would that make sense on a spherical service i'm going to see him in a few weeks and i'll talk to him about all this and I promise you, I won't use the phrase flat earth. <laughs> Good point. Personally, while I find all of this unsettling, it, all, it does also confirm a great deal that Satan is at this moment in time the prince of this world, that the NWO pseudo-elites are either directly cooperating with him or indirectly via his minions, or are being controlled by him somehow indirectly, that we are being prepared for the coming of the Antichrist who will appear to save us after the great chastisement. Wow, I have never said the word chastisement ever. And nearly all people and nations will be taken in by him. I see the global spherical model is a satanic one designed to deceive mankind, make him feel lonely in a Carl Sagan-style cosmos, and thereby disorient him and encourage him to seek answers in the flesh and world. Anyway... Thanks so much for the videos. I'm kind of reeling now. <laughs> David. Thank you, David. Awesome. That's, that's, that's good stuff. All right. Let's uh, move on. Let's see what we got here. We got uh, NASA class action lawsuit by John. Hey, Mark. My name is John Lowe, and I was just watching you on Patricia's show talking about lawyers. I really believe that a huge class action, class action lawsuit against NASA for billions of dollars would draw some attention from mainstream media. Please help me find a lawyer that's willing to file the lawsuit, and then we can start promoting it through all of our Flat Earth connections. Let me know what you think. Um, well, John, when it comes to lawsuits, you got to spend money to make money. And if you are going up against a massive heady, heavy hitter like NASA, and remember, NASA is not just a, it's a government organization. 
you might as well be taking on the U.S. Army in some ways. I mean, no, NASA doesn't have the budget necessarily that the U.S. Army does, but it's still massive. It's, it, and so, no, it, the average person is not going to be able to sue NASA. And, and thank you. For the, you're not the first place, person that sent me that email. I, I thank you to everybody that, that thinks that suing NASA is going to work. Yeah, it could work, but you're going to have to have a bigger player sue NASA, meaning you're going to have to some, have somebody that's really financially divested, like one of their subcontractors, like Raytheon or General uh, Dynamics or Lockheed Martin or Boeing. Take your pick. One of those guys is going to have to be upset. You know, those guys with a whole bunch of lawyers on retainer that get paid a whole lot of money and they've got a massive budget. That's that's what a class action suit is all about. The average person on the street. No, it would take it would take years just to organize something that, like that for the average person on the street. However, like if Boeing wanted to sue NASA, oh, they could start the, that thing up tomorrow. So it, very, very interesting. But again, something should be encouraged. So if you work for Boeing and you work in the legal department. Start thinking about it or, or pull away from NASA as quickly as you can because eventually they are going down like a big sack of rice or a sack of dirt, whatever. This one's called Flat Earth Spreading the Truth. Mark, today I was surfing the boob tube and wouldn't you know, on a New Balance shoe commercial, they showed chemtrails in the background sky. Talk about subtle programming. Hmm. Andy. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of that going around. And and thank you. Everyone that sends me commercials and little clips, yeah, assume – in fact, I just got two more since we started the show. Assume that I have not gotten them, and I will try to put them in videos if I get a chance. There's all sorts of great stuff out there. So I mean, in fact, I had somebody send me Flat Earth references from both Cheers and Family Ties, the, the sitcoms back in the early 80s. That's amazing. It's good stuff. The internet misses nothing. I mean, honestly – the Cheers one was fantastic because it was season one episode. It was the pilot episode of Cheers. How amazing is that? And literally, it was in the like the first ten minutes of the show. It's great. All right, this one's called something potentially very huge, and it's from uh, one of my guys in Britain. Mark, I haven't gone crazy, but I came across a South African guy who was talking about things that were represented in part. Within the interview between you and Jeffrey Grupp, he also mentioned Sundog and Crow 777. I can't say I fully got to grips with what he said, but he mentioned this to me and want to mention the dome to you also. I can't stress that I enough that I respectfully request that you email this guy. He's been researching for over 30 years and has never published his extensive findings. And who's the guy? The guy is ascensionprop at gmail.com. Okay, I will put that in my things to do pile. I've got things to do pile and, and people I should write back and all, all sorts of fun little piles. But I, I do try to get to as many things as I can. This one's called <laughs> Grup. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Every time I hear you trying to scare up a challenger for Jeffrey Grupp, I envision JG crammed in, Oh, Jeffrey Grupp crammed in a trunk waiting to be let off his leash like the gimp in Pulp Fiction. That inspired this. Being a movie buff, I thought you'd appreciate it. Ever flat word, Tim. And yeah, it's it's me as the handler and Jeffrey Grupp as the gimp. <laughs> it's me saying, bring out the Grupp. That's awesome. That's really great. Peanut Gallery says, talk about the machine that goes ping, the balloon video. Yes, I absolutely should talk. Well, I was hoping that, that somebody would call me about that, about the, the balloon video. That's what I was waiting. I, I, I want to talk about it, but I actually want to talk about it live. And if I we don't get anybody by the first break, then I'll probably talk about it in the second. But, but remind me. So thank you for that. So phone number to call in, by the way, is seven two zero. And I know it's the fourth of July. So in fact, there's probably not even anybody at the station. <laughs> it's killing me. I'm literally probably the only guy that broadcasts today. Everybody else was was doing an encore presentation, and me, I was live. Seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. At 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998. And it's because of my dedication for Flat Earth. That's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the people. I'm <laughs> bringing truth to the masses. Yep. While everybody else is having barbecue and fireworks, I'm doing a Flat Earth show on a radio network. This one's called Free Survival Guide. Hello, Mark. Please send me the free survival guide. Thanks, David. 
And for those of you who don't know what David is talking about, I wrote, because the truth should be free, really, I wrote a survival guide called Empty Shelves, and a friend of mine converted it into a little PDF file. It's about 100 pages long. And if you want it, I will send it to you. It's a cool little survival guide. It basically will give you a head start no matter what you have or don't have in the event of a long-term power outage. And it, it's not specific. It just assumes that at the very least you have a long-term power outage and it's not coming back. You know, it's undetermined the length of time. So it's not dedicated to zombies or meteors or volcanoes or locusts or more zombies. It's it's just, you know, it starts with the basics. But it's it's not bad. It's broken down into some really easy chapters. So if you want it, email me at msa. I'm sorry, M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T-23 at Comcast.net, and I'll just shoot it off to you. In fact, all you have to do is put in the subject line, I want survival guide or survival guide or booga booga, blah, whatever it is. I'll figure it out. You know, if it's a really short email, I'll, I'll just send you the survival guide. I don't think I've ever sent it to somebody that didn't want it. So it's called Empty Shelves. This one's called... Mel's Hole, Washington, 15 miles deep. Mark, have you heard of Mel's Hole in Ellensburg, Washington? That's in central Washington, supposedly over 15 miles deep. Several YouTube videos about it. This one is an Art Bell interview of the property owner testimony. A very weird story. Uh, no, but if, how would they know it's 15 miles deep? For one. Two, I don't buy it. If If massive corporations, massive drilling operations have tried to go down and they have only gone down eight miles, which is 12 kilometers. Uh, oh, there's a phone call that might, may or may not make it in. Let's take a look, shall we? And we'll pick up. Yeah, we got time before the break. Why not? 336 area code. What is going on out there? Can you hear me? Area code 336, North Carolina but, here. Hi, Mark. Hey, what's up? This is Mark down in North Carolina calling you. <laughs> How are things? Why aren't, why aren't you out in the fireworks? Or are the fireworks over? Because they're, they're blowing them off, and I can see them from my house, and they're not that great anyhow. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. I hey, had a life. I, I had a life. Well, I figure I might torture you. Uh, oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, we got a little bit. A little yeah, bit. there's a little bit of overlap. No, I thought I might give you a Fourth of July, uh, a little Fourth of July flat earth quiz. It just consists of one question. Uh oh. Okay. Shoot. All right. Do you know what the longest documented longest distance line of sight uh, photograph is? What is the, the oh. longest distance that anybody has taken? And this, this involves a telescope, so it's a telescopic photograph. I'm just curious. And I should that. know this because this has been passed around the flat earth for the last couple of weeks because, in fact, I think, uh, I think Eric Dubé actually published the website because there's it's a comp there's competitions out there outside of flat Earth that people look what's the longest photograph the longest object anybody can photograph away so I don't know I'm gonna guess it was because I saw the website briefly I I think it was over 300 miles though wasn't it well um, on, do you know yeah that video that Eric did uh, had a 275 mile statute mile uh, oh, photograph I gotcha. and. Yeah, so I went into that website, uh, beyondhorizons.eu, mm -hmm. and I actually found one that was longer than that. Uh, they used a telescope, and I don't know anything about using telescopes and, and cameras and all, and, but uh, they have a uh, photograph that's 335 statute miles. Wow. And what's interesting about this photograph is that um, the guy is standing on a 6,000-foot mountain peak looking over at another 6,000-foot mountain peak. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got, you don't have to mess with that sort of... Uh, no, you, you don't, don't have, have to go, have to yeah. take into consideration. Yeah, so, yeah. so that altitude is taken care of. So you're looking uh, straight across, line of sight, 335 statute miles, which is a mind blower. So anyhow, I, I think that's pretty amazing. And, that is and, amazing. And, and there should be no doubt that the Earth is flat after a photograph like that. I agree, place. I agree. And and give us give us the website one more time. Beyondhorizons.eu. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember and, when it was. You know, so go ahead. 
Well, when Eric uh, put out that video, I got I was very excited. I thought this is it. This is the end of it. This is the end of the great debate. Is it flat? Is it round? And um, I sent an email over to uh, a photographer named Mark. He's one of the uh, principals at uh, BeyondHorizons.eu. And, and my subject line on the email was the, the world's most famous photograph. And uh, so that got his attention. And I told him that, you know, th- 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 this photograph is soon to, to become uh, an icon. And I didn't tell him it was a flat earth community, but I told him that, if he's interested, I can provide him some more information. So a lot of the metrics that uh, Eric used in that video uh, were were beyond horizon stuff, you know, their their math work and stuff. But on, I've not heard back from them um, mm. only once, and I think they I, – I don't know what's in their mind. It's been about three weeks or so. Um, since I had uh, first contacted them. And uh, he seemed very interested in it, but I've not heard back from him, like I said. Sure. Um, I, you know, they've, uh, they've made some mistakes in, in their website on, on certain things. Um, they, they do believe that uh, refract, refraction of light tends to raise objects in the distance, and now we know that that's, that's not true. Yeah. They, uh, refraction lowers objects. So, um, and, you know, I... These guys, these guys are pretty smart, as far as I can tell. Um, oh yeah. And they've only made a couple of mistakes that I could see on their website, but I, I think that's pretty damn. It's pretty cool. Um, oh yeah. These photographs exist, and they're outside of the flat Earth community. They've got nothing to do with us. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I thought it was again. It's one more nail in the coffin. It's fantastic. It just, it's just another aspect that we can uh, that we can use at our disposal. Uh, we got about thirty seconds to. We're going to break. You got any shout outs you want to give? Anything you want to? Man, I got no shout outs. <laughs> well, happy 4th I, of July then. I gotta get, and... I gotta... Go ahead. I, I got to increase my sphere of influence, I guess. But, uh, well, I thank <laughs> you and I wish you the best. And it's good chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you. And and thank you for being the, the first person and hopefully not the only one to call in tonight. Cool. Well, I hope more people call and keep you company yeah. over there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Have a good one. Good night, man. Bye. Bye. Yep. Bye. Real people, real radio. Wherever you are, make it TFR. The Truth Frequency Radio. Back to Strange World, part two of four. Phone number to call in tonight is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3898. That is 213-233-3998. I like it, that number, second one, because it has three threes in it. 333 is my favorite number, believe it or not. Uh, while we were on the break, somebody called in. So let's look at 612 area code. 612, are you there? I most certainly am. Oh, boy. It's Wes, isn't it? (laughs) A little deeper, Mark. A little more depressing, okay? Uh, Oh, Wes. Well, there you Wes, go. There you Wes, go. Wes from Flat Earth News, what's <laughs> going on? What? What? Why are you calling? <laughs> oh man, why am I calling? Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I was trying to tell you earlier. Why am I going to call? We already discussed. No, um, there was one thing after you had left the show, um, my show, by the way, um, the, because it's always about Wes. Uh, <laughs> Brian, really? Because I always thought something. it was. I always thought it was about Matt. <laughs> but go ahead. 
Uh, Brian had uh, mentioned something. We started talking about that, uh, the satellite that came down. Yeah. Or the, well, supposed satellite. No proof on that at all. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, but he did bring up a good point. Wait, let me let me update you on this. Go ahead. Actually, Metabunk jumped all over this, which w- they because they zoomed in and enhanced that thing on the side of it, and it is one of the Google Loon satellites. So, and he was saying just oh. because, and and his argument is this: just because it was on a balloon doesn't mean that we don't send satellites up in rockets. And I come back with something to this effect. And you, you, you know the saying. The quote is, with, with friends like these, new, who needs enemies, right? My quote is, right, right. well, with satellites like these, who needs rockets? You know what I'm saying? If, if, if you can put a satellite up with a balloon for dirt cheap and get everything you need to do done, you know, get done, why, what do you need the rocket for? What, what altitude are you shooting those rockets up? And then you get a question. It's like, okay, is that the con? You know, do, do you just put up whoever's satellite on a balloon and then fire a rocket up there, bill him for whatever it is? It could be the one of the, 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 the greatest little tech cons of all time. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, if they want to make some money, that's the way to do it. Hey, it's yeah. going to cost you $50 million for your satellite when it yeah. cost them like 50000 Yeah. Um, yeah, but what, what market, or I mean, what Brian had mentioned that made a lot of sense. And yeah. of course, Brian always makes sense. You know that. Yeah. Uh, he said that, why was the thing be- beeping? Why would it have to beep? Oh, why would it have an audio you know? tone at all? Exactly. Uh, hard to say. Because if they got it on, if they got all these things up there, you know, they got GPS tracking devices that are built into it. So why would they need the thing to beep? Well, I think it was an alert system to where when it dropped below a certain altitude, who knows, maybe it was part of a location system. But yeah, the audio tone wasn't very loud at all. Uh, Or maybe it was a low battery sound, you know, like a smoke alarm. I don't know. Uh, but it, I don't think, you know, it, maybe that's beep, why it came down. <laughs> well, yeah, well, no, I, well, it could have been, and I don't know what the life expectancy on, on those things are. And, and the guy from Metabunk, um, Metabunk, Mick West, he also showed a picture of one that came down in Los Angeles, you know, cause these things go up all over the place and, and crashed cool. into stuff. But my argument is, okay, look, yeah, you send weather balloons up, but they, you can carry such big payloads now that. What exactly, what specifically do you need to use rockets for with these satellites? Because that thing looked like every artist's illustration of a satellite we'd ever seen. And I saw, in fact, go check this out to get a chance. I saw a satellite that was supposed to be launched by a really, really big weather balloon down in New Zealand. And it was a NASA satellite, right? And this thing was so big. Oh, that was was, was the balloon that that was the balloon that was as big as a football field. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing was traveling. It was not moving very fast, but it was so heavy. It was heavier. It, it knocked over the SUV like it wasn't even there. I mean, it would have killed the guy if he was in it. Yeah. And the point is that if you can lift no thousands of pounds with a weather balloon and keep it up there a while, what is that you using the rockets for? You know, it, it does it prove flat Earth? No, it doesn't. But it completely takes out of the equation everybody that says that satellites can't be launched with weather balloons. They absolutely can. And you just... Now, I'm wondering... Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Um, I'm just wondering now, I know you've probably watched it more than I did, which is Rob Skiba's uh, deal with the uh, the Airstream. And I was thinking about this. If they, this would really explain why we don't get any, um, I know, I know we like to think that we, the reason why we don't, why we drop off a GPS over in the, southern hemispheres because it's a land-based right, uh, right. system however if we are actually getting signals from the satellites that are on balloons and if the jet stream averts the southern hemisphere makes right. so much sense now yeah of why yeah. they can't find why anything. they don't have coverage absolutely there should be blanket and Thank this is a review yeah. for anybody out there in, in the flat earth world with supposedly 32 satellites that are blanket coverage, uh, giving blanket coverage of the entire globe, 
there should be no dead spots, especially if it's the United States military. You know, they are going to overkill everything. There should be no dead spots. And right. they say, well, you're not going to give your bandwidth to civilians. Like, my ass, you're not. It's civilian aircraft. It's your people in the skies. Of course you're going to give bandwidth away. If it was there. I don't think it's there. I don't think it's yeah. ever been there. No, I agree with you on that one. Yeah. I do. So, Oh, there's a quote from the uh, um, um, gallery. Hang on one second. I was the, waiting for it. I was waiting for it. Hey, would you says, please tell him? Or yeah. no, I'll, I'll tell him myself. Peanut gallery. Go ahead. Look me up on Skype. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll accept. And then you can bash me 24 <laughs> seven. Wow. Okay. The, the quote make, is make jokes. I gotcha. Crash programs fail because they are based on theory that with nine women pregnant, you can get a baby in a month. Hmm. Uh, Ver, nice. Werner, Werner von Braun said that. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's like Werner von no, Braun, the father, of, the father of NASA, ex-Nazi scientist, ex, well, would have been a war criminal if he wasn't so smart. Isn't that interesting? The guys that are really valuable. Right. Nah, we're not going to shoot them. But yeah, they're valuable. They're too, they're too uh, oh. much of an asset to us. Yep. That's how NASA was built. Yep. Anyway, uh, uh, anything Way else you wanted to? Uh, no, not really. Uh, just letting FYI, we're Zulu, me, and probably Brian will join us. Uh, we're going to do a show after your show. So, okay. Yeah, if you're around, pop in. I will. I will certainly. I got to get more videos on my new channel. <laughs> okay. And, and anybody out there listening who who is subscribed to my old channel, Flat Earth News Talk, I have a new one, and it's called the exact same thing. So the only difference is, is I'm not wearing a hat. So just got look it. for the guy. Wow, hold hold in the guitar. Su- subscribe. Put on your notifications so you don't miss the show. I'm going to start right. cranking them out. All right then. I'll I'll be looking for you. All right. You, take care. All right. Have a good one. Have night. a good four. All right. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And I'm not going to give out the secondary number until we have problems. So we'll just go with that for now. Email. Oh, you know what? There's a quote that Pina Gallery wanted me to read which was saved over from last week. It's go something little, little something like this. The measure of greatness in a scientific idea is the extent to which it stimulates through and opens up new lines of research. That's from Paul A.M. Durek, D-I-R-A-C. It's good. And I'll save the other one for later in the show. Meanwhile, back in emails... This one's called Artwork and Cookies. Hi, Mark. My name is Jay Bello. Uh, It is an an image I'd like to share with you for your slideshow. It's a photo of an acrylic on canvas triptych that my husband Kyle and I painted for his mother. The piece is called Visions of Hermes. It combines my interest in the ancient mysteries and Kyle's passion for flat earth theory. Personally, I am not a flat flat earther or a ball earther, but I have watched over 100 Flat Earth-related videos and continue to watch them. Flat Earth serves as a foundation for objective questioning and fuels the drive for disillusionment like no other conspiracy theory. I especially appreciate how Flat Earth content creators have branched out into other related and interesting subjects. Unlike some stories I have heard about Flat Earth driving couples apart, it has brought Kyle and I closer together. When Kyle discovered Flat Earth, he kept it a secret from me for two months for fear of my reaction. You know what? You're lucky. There's people that keep it a lot longer than that. Though terrified, he decided to let a Flat Earth video autoplay one night. At first, of course, I was skeptical. After about a week, I came around to the theory's plausibility. These days, we enjoy watching Flat Earth and other non-mainstream type videos every night. Flat Earth has led us to recommit to our moral values and deeply consider how we will raise our future children in a non-oblate spheroid world. Thanks for your hard work and dedication. If you give me your address, I'll bake and send some short bread cookies. Feel free to read this letter on your mail show and share my e- email address for every, anybody interested in Flat Earth artwork. You know what? I'm going to. Your email address is j... 
Hang on one second. It is J I V five one six one at gmail.com. That's J I V five one six one at gmail.com. And you know what? I am going to put this one in my cookie pile because I got to give her my address. And I don't think I did. And this was a while ago. It was in June, early June. So sorry about that. I'm just, again, I get so many emails. Let's keep pounding away at them. You remember the phone number to call in? Anything on the switchboard? Nope, not yet. Oh, there. We'll see. Is this one going to come through? 214 always seems to have problems, but we might get them. 214, you made it through with first try. We're, you're calling from Dallas? Oh, yes. Hi, Mark. It's Jan. Hey, Jan. What's going hey, on? Jan. Hi. <laughs> um, we have fireworks going on out of here. It's kind of loud, but... Um, well, it is Texas. I like to listen. <laughs> That's true. I like to uh, listen to my adversaries every once in a while, and this was a couple of years ago, and it's a different perspective on the Earth. It's mm-hmm. Richard Hoagland on mm. the radio show, and he had a oh, very nice guest, and uh, they both were in agreement that the Earth was the brain of the universe, and it is asleep. Hmm. I'd never heard that before. I thought that was kind of fascinating, yeah. Wow. The brain of the earth. And and you remember that Richard Hoagland was one of the few debates that didn't happen. It was <laughs> Oh yes. Yeah. He was supposed yes, to debate myself and T I T R H and it did not happen. He was a no show. And I never heard anything. Well, because again, remember, his theories are one of the few conspiracy th- group theory groups that do not dovetail into flat earth because he believes in, you know, that there's millions of people living on the moon and hundreds of thousands of people living on Mars. And there's mass, uh, this massive secret pro- space program that nobody knows about. And it's like, yeah, it's not, not terrible except that even with us, in fact, a secret space space program would imply that it would be even easier to take pictures of the globe because you just have them take it, and then you just don't tell anyone where the pictures came from. You can make up anything you want. So, anyway. Wow. Yeah. It's an amazing world, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, by the way, thank you for for listening on on tonight the fourth. I didn't know how many people I, I would actually have listening. Well, I kind of called in because I it's something I've always wanted to say. Maybe not that many people will hear it, but. Uh, as far as Richard Hoagland, but I think that's very serious myself of how these people look at the earth yeah. as a brain. Yeah, I agree. Since it's really in- is a big universe. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I, 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 very, very fascinating. And by the way, more people think will listen to it than you might think because remember, I play this uh, uh, the replays on YouTube. Oh, great. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, sorry. You know, don't be nervous or anything. It's just you and pretty much uh, everybody. So. I know, right? Yeah, so, it, you, no, yeah, you have right. you, you. Are you kidding? You sound great. Remember, I'm I'm a sucker for Texas draws. So you have oh, a that's, you, that's right. Yeah, you have a you so have a great sweet. great Texas accent. Oh, you're so sweet, and um, I hope you have a, a wonderful rest of the week and all. Uh, you too. Okay. All right. <laughs> have a good night. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Did I embarrass her? Maybe. But that's okay. We, uh, we move on. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And we were just about ready to go back into emails. This one's called, Please Advise on Using BBC Footage ASAP. It was sent to multiple people, Jaron and DITRH and myself, Hi, guys. Can I ask, if I want to use a BBC video for Flat Earth satire, can I? Do I need to add a fair use statement or any disclaimer to avoid being blocked when taken down? Any advice? Much appreciated. Thank you. I mean, you can add a fair use thing, but it really depends on the guy that's that's editing it or, you know, that's doing the, the blocking on their side. Most of the time, when I put up a clip, I mean, I, I never put fair use on any of my stuff. Uh, it's not going to, you know, it's sometimes it's going to be blocked. Sometime it, sometimes it isn't. I usually don't fight the blocks. But I did recently because the Trailer Park Boys 
had some sort of intern overworked and underpaid guy who, who was giving me grief about it and was like, what are you, what are you doing? So I'm, I'm dealing with that one. It's like, look, they talked about Flat Earth for nine minutes. I'm going to use it. And you guys can fight me if you want, but it's, it's, it, my channel is, does nothing but Flat Earth news. That's really what it is. And so I am reporting to Flat Earth. If your client talks about Flat Earth, I'm going to say that I'm reporting it. Sounds like a clear case of fair use to me, but eh, you never know. But at the same time, you know, Katy Perry blocked that seven seconds of her talking about Flat Earth. And that was second generation through a phone. And I'm going to fight that one, too, just for the heck of it, just because it's Katy Perry's production team. And, you know, they were dumb enough to pull the video down. Anyway, moving on. And let's see here. Peanut Gallery and others. Let's charge you. Oh, it's funny. It's good. Charge me for my trademark. It's funny. Okay. Sorry. Back to emails. This one's called Wingsuit Pilot Fraser Corzin Breaks Speed Record. Says he sees curvature. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look this chucklehead up. All you have to do is type in Wingsuit Pilot Speed Record. You don't have to type in his name, uh, uh, Fraser Corson. Because he will, uh, it, it, he said when he flew, he was only flying at airplane height, you know, commercial airliner height, 30,000 feet, r- rough, yeah, it was about a speed record, it wasn't about altitude, says that he could see the curve from his helmet. Uh-huh, yeah, whatever, mainstream propaganda BS. And there was a call that tried to come in, and then they changed their mind. So whoever's trying to call in is 720-897-6111. And if that doesn't work, well, let's see if we can grab them. 845 area code. Are you there? Hey, uh, long time listener, first time caller. How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> that, my, my friend, is a, is a fabrication. You are not a first time caller. Happy 4th of July, sir. Yeah, happy, ha- happy fourth to you. I would imagine that New York is wrapping up some of their fireworks because it's eleven o'clock out there. Oh, they're going on still all around. Still, oh uh, boy. Because now, but yeah, they fought, well, they're finally legal here for uh, the fourth and yeah. for New Year's Eve. Uh, so, and where I am, I'm twenty miles from Pennsylvania, and, 20, and there you can get the good shit. You know, the <laughs> whisker doodles, whisker diskers, you know, all that Joe Dirt stuff. Nice. Where here, you can only buy sprinkly stuff, but yeah. everybody's buying the good stuff. It's now, do awesome. you have do you have Native American oh, yeah. reservations out there? No, 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 no. I can't get you, any of those you, really good stuff. Yeah, you want the you quality <laughs> stuff. Oh, yeah, the stuff that I used to make and sell to those guys. The uh, we get oh, I mean, there's up in Washington. There's so many Native American reservations that it's it's, it's crazy the amount of stuff you can get there. There's you know because they 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 could buy basically anything. But yeah, I know what you're talking about the Joe the Joe Dirt stuff. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's great. Oh wait, I have a quote that's yeah, already but... come in from the <laughs> peanut gallery. Hang on. Peanut Gallery Gallery says, A theory is a supposition which we hope to be true. A hypothesis is a supposition which we expect to be useful. Fictions belong to the realm of art. If made to intrude elsewhere, they become either make-believes or mistakes. And that's from George Johnstone Stoney. Okay. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Wow. I, who knows? I, yeah, that's who knows? A brain that's bender. A, yeah, I know. That's a deep one. He's uh, he's he's kind of weird that 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 peanut gallery. He's you know he is. He's really like the Stig from the uh, 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 from that British automotive show, which I keep forgetting the name, even though I watched it all the time. Top Gear. Top, top Gear. Yeah, the top Stig. Gear. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, Stig, I I'll Stig give Stig you mine real hot. quick. Yeah, what is it? Uh, this one is two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the universe. Yep. I know that one. That one is uh, Albert Einstein. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Correct. And it, and it could have been Mark. It could have been Mark Twain. Yeah. But Mark Twain wasn't that scientific. And he counters with a simple one. He says, fine for you, simple minded people. Um, 
whenever anyone says theoretically, they really mean not really. That's from Dave Parnas. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. And so actually, true. I, I should. So I, true. I heard something years ago, which is you can always tell when nerds are fighting because they start they start every sentence or they start the argument with actually the word actually. You know, someone will say something and they'll say, uh, actually, yeah. the speed of light is more like, you know. XXX, you know, per hey, um, got a question about satellites, maybe the peanut gallery, gallery can tell us. Mm-hmm. But they are only the geosynchronous ones, or even the ones that are orbiting, are supposed to be along the equator, mm-hmm. correct? And going either east or west. Right. But the last few nights, I've been seeing these lights that are going from south to north. Uh, I mean, and oh, last that's... night it was strange. I was sitting on the back porch. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. And I was just looking at my phone and a light got my attention and it was like a headlight. I thought, and I looked up and I saw what I thought was a plane and it was like, Oh man, that thing's awfully low because I've been watching on flight radar. The planes that come over my head from the South are generally going towards Chicago or LA and they're already at 10,000 feet. Right. This thing was what I thought was low. And then I, when I looked up at it for like a second, I was like, Holy crap, that thing's bright. And then it dimmed down to a tiny little dot and then went east. I was like, what the, the hell was the that? Catch, yeah, the catch on that one is, did it make any sound? Do you Nothing. Because if it made, yeah, that's, it that's, right the, that's the giveaway. Was here. Yeah. If, if it doesn't make any it sound, that it's... here, 5,000 feet. Yeah. And then when it dimmed to a little bre- to a little dot, it appeared as though it was way, you know, 75, 80,000 feet. And I'm only calculating that because I'm seeing the planes that come overhead when they come from the one direction, they're between seven and 10,000 feet because they're coming into JFK. And the ones that are going in the other direction are generally 35,000 feet because they're already at full altitude, either going towards Canada or whatever. You know, I look at the flight radar and that thing looked like it was a few thousand feet up and then it dimmed down and it was real. Then I realized it was way up there. It was just a little dot. And I moved off to the east, and I was like, "Whoa!" Oh yeah, that one got that one tripped me out. You know, one of these days you're gonna have to cave in and buy one of those uh, pair of night vision binoculars. I, I've been killing myself because I I want them so bad. We, I mean, they're, they they you'll, you'll it, it's, seriously if, if you're watching stuff now, it'll change your life. It did me. I mean, once you start watching that stuff on a regular yeah. basis, you that's you 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 it become addicted to it. You want to just keep going out. It's like, what's coming out today? What's coming out today? And it's fascinating. But yeah, the dead giveaway yeah. is, of course, that there's no sound. Because planes, jet, yes. prop- no. propellers, they all make these sounds. But a unified field engine, which is otherwise known as the spooky UFO engine, makes no sound at all. Yeah. And I think I saw a, a either a wing, a flying wing, like a B-2 bomb or something, perhaps like that. Oh, I was man. actually on the phone with uh, Brian Burton, yeah, you, you know, uh, Master Gunner, and we were talking, and, and something flew over, and that also had no sound, but it was pitch black, and I just saw the shape and, and two lights, and it circled around, and then went back towards the north, and that was it. Over the nice. We got about uh, crazy, tw- yeah. twenty something, up there. twenty seconds till the break. Any uh, oh, any gotta shout go. outs? Gotta go. Yeah, any shout outs? Uh, to to every to everyone, everyone love you all. Nathaniel, can't get got to get you on uh, on uh, Hangouts. That's the guy in uh, Pittsburgh, California. Oh, cool. We talk all the time. He's way cool, way cool. Yeah. Got to get him out there. Uh, everybody in the South, I'm hoping I'm trying to go down to Candy's party. Oh so, wow! So, uh, my first flat Earth party in in North Carolina. Right on. All right, man, we're yeah, going to break. Should be interesting. I love you, man. Keep it up. I'm going to be on... You are now tuned into the truth frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth frequency.
Unity Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. And the phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And if it is not July 4th, this is not live. But since it is July 4th, for me anyway, right now, then you can get through. Call in. We'll talk about stuff. While I'm waiting for the phone calls, let's jump from emails to Flat Earth News. And all I'm doing here is I'm going into YouTube, typing in Flat Earth, setting the filter to one week. And see what's been going on over the last week. A lot of stuff. Hey, in fact, too many. uh, Jaronism, cranking out a whole bunch of videos. ODD Reality, running his 24-7 channel. Some guy named Mark Sargent put a video out about how Donald Trump was talking space with uh, Buzz Aldrin in the background, and Buzz Aldrin had one of the worst poker faces in history. You can, you can look up that video. That's fun. Trump talks space, flat earth, or Trump flat earth, either way. Instead of filter to this week, you'll find it. Russian vids cranking out stuff. An infinite plane society going above and beyond. As a matter of fact, he was organizing a uh, airplane banner in Florida that was towing behind, not a Skyrider, but actually towing a big sign behind a plane. It was said something to the effect of research, flat earth, globe exit. Awesome. D. Marvel making stuff. Great. Celebrate truth. He's running a 24-7 Christian flat earth channel, which has been, keeps going. Uh, flat earth asshole. He came back from his long road trip, did a whole bunch of hangouts. That guy's got to be optimistic. I mean, everywhere he went, he had a whole bunch of people. And in fact, the last stop on his way back to, I think it was California, was uh, a stop in Denver. He had 60 people show up. And Bob from Globebusters was there and ODD. It was fantastic. Documentary team spent part of the week with Patricia Steer out at Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, which, by the way, I already did that show. So normally I would say, oh, yeah, I'm going to be on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes tomorrow. No, I will. If if you missed it on Monday, I'm going to put it on my channel for Wednesday. But it is it is this week's show. But, yeah, she had the, the documentary team out of Los Angeles that is trying to do a thing on the Flat Earth community. And they're talking to different people from the conference and maybe even a few people that are not going to be part of the conference. But they're going to the conference anyway. There's going to be quite a few cameras at that thing recording in all its glory, which is fantastic. Uh, or what else? What else? What else? Let's just go to page two. We're only going to do a couple pages and we're going to jump right back into it. Martin Liebke. Love the thing he put out today. Flat Earth British putting the trolls out with the trash. As you guys know, I've made a couple statements about how I feel we should deal with internet trolls. I think that the internet troll situation has always been out of hand ever since the internet began. You know, when I watched the first forums pop up, uh, when people figured out, guys, young, angry men figured out with bad childhoods, figured out they could be anonymous and just start throwing rocks from the darkness. And it just went downhill from there. And griefing and trolling were born. Awful, awful, awful. Uh, see if there's anything else. Oh, yeah, the balloon. The satellite, the balloon crashed in Brazil. Let's, let's end with that one. Which is, there was a, uh, a, a satellite that went down. It was tied to a, a giant weather balloon. But it was a full-blown satellite that belonged to the Google Loon program. And it landed in Brazil, and it got quite a bit of traction. I put a thing up on it saying, attached to the balloon, NASA lies, research flat Earth. And Metabunk Metabunk has come back and said that, well, just because it's attached to a balloon doesn't mean we don't use rockets. 
And my argument is, of course, well, it also doesn't mean that you do use rockets because now we know that you can put up for pennies on the dollar big payloads up in what with weather balloons. So what exactly are you putting up on these rockets? And in some cases, could you cheat and say, oh, yeah, we're putting your satellite on a rocket and then use a balloon and pocket all the money that they paid for the rocket? Potential for corruption there is huge. So there you go. That's all we're going to do for Flat Earth News at the moment. So thank you for everybody that's making videos. That's fantastic. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. And we've got somebody on the line right now. Uh, okay, let's pick up 616. And I don't know why 84... No, 616 just hung up. 616 just hung up as I was going to grab him. And 845 is still there. I don't know. He's just hanging on the line, which is fine. I think I'm going to... No, I'm not going to boot him. I'll leave him there. Sorry about 616. Uh, I saw you, and then you hung up. I didn't know how long you were sitting there. I was out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. But if you call back, I will pick you up. I promise. I just wanted to get through the Flat Earth News. Because if I don't, Peanut Gallery gets a little grumpy. A little grumpopotamus. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of whiny. Okay. This one's called... Watch Mark on YouTube. Hello, Mark. I've watched a lot of your videos and other people's videos. I just want to share this one with you about five minutes into this conversation during the being this poor kid getting beat up about flat earth, at least five minute mark. It sounds like he does admit that the earth is flat because he doesn't say it isn't flat. Just listen to him. And if I'm wrong, oh, well, on another note, I did enjoy a video that you were talking about the Navy and the pilots on Navy ships and submarines. There were machine shops and fabrication shops. I've been in machines for over 30 years. I did find it funny that you mentioned that the IRS has no mobile unit that can fix something in space. Hmm. That's from Dan in New Jersey. And the video he's talking about, I'll click on it real quick, is called, it's a channel called Daniel Socha, and oh, he's got a playlist, literally called Mark. Huh, interesting. Right on, that's cool. And no worries, Mark from New York. It's all right, it's, all right. it's okay, well, you weren't hurting anything. Phone number to call in, 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. This email is called Amanda. I, Mark, I sent you some sun pics from Virginia. One looks like a UFO on one side. Cool. Fantastic. I, I looked at them. That was pretty cool. This one's called Ewan Jones, Survival PDF. Hi, Mark. Longtime listener. I'd really find it helpful if you sent on a survival PDF for me, please, mate. Keep up the good work as always. Best wishes, Ewan. Hopefully I sent that to you. Ewan, if you're listening and I did not send you a survival guide for free because I sent to anybody that asked me, I, I'd be more than happy to send it. It's just on my desktop. It's only a little two-meg file. My only request, if you're going to, if I'm going to send it to you, do the right thing and print it out. I don't care if you share it with other people. You can be selfish with it and say, I've got a little survival manual and you don't. I'll live and you'll be dead. But at the same time, you might want to print it out because otherwise you're just going to, as soon as your phone battery gets less and, you know, smaller and smaller, you're going to be like, oh, no, I don't have it memorized. So print it out. It's only 100 pages. It's not, you know, in fact, 50 pages if you if you do double-sided, which you probably should. You know, take it to, I, I took it to, oh, geez, what do they call it? It's not Kinko's anymore. Is it FedEx Kinko's or just Kinko's? I can't remember. FedEx, whatever. I just took it to a copy place and had it, had it done and bound. Gave it to my family. I say, now you have no excuse. This one is, this email is called Ringmakers of Saturn. Mark, you may read this on air. See, that's what you're supposed to do. Otherwise, I get blindsided. Although nobody's sued me yet. Uh, Johnny here from northern Idaho, Coeur d'Alene area. I enjoy your work that you are doing and have been plugged into flat earth for a couple of years. I've been looking for answers to the big questions for about 30 years now and have traveled down endless rabbit holes, it seems. When I ran across flat earth, it was the textbook knee-jerk reaction, but after the initial shock and week of being glued to the computer screen researching, it was easy. Truly an aha moment and was like I knew it inside all along. By the way, the aha moment, that is one of the inspirations for the songs that he used for the Flat Earth Conference. 
Now, like the rest of us, I'm a bit consumed and absorb all the flat Earth info I can get my hands on. Do you know the ring makers of Saturn by Norm Bergrun? No. I ran across it years back, and I'm trying to relate it to Flat Earth. The premise is that Saturn's rings are being manufactured. I have not heard anything mentioned of this in the last two years plus, but I have been plugged into Flat Earth. I picture a couple of grunt monkeys. Grunt monkeys? That's, that's actually, that'd be a great name for a band. Working their shift on the dome, painting the rings in. Who knows? Maybe our buddy Matt was on the job. He's out there like friggin' Pluto. <laughs> Or Saturn, as the case may be, all food for thought. I wanted to get back to Raleigh this fall for the festivities, but much of much to my chagrin, it sold out. I have, would have never thought it would sell out months in advance. Too bad for me, I guess, but how cool to have this kind of energy in the Flat Earth movement. You read an email a while back from someone from the Coeur d'Alene that wanted to do a test on the lake. He gave me his name, but no contact info. I would be willing to help on such a project and would be able to would like to find the local flat folks that would like to meet up here in northern Idaho. If there is anyone interested, contact me at Powers House, and that's P-O-W-E-R-S-H-A-U-S. Powers House? 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 Yeah. P-O-W-E-R-S-H-A-U-S at gmail.com. Keep up the good work. Flat regards, Johnny. So if anyone wants to get a hold of anybody in the Coeur d'Alene area you can contact powers house at gmail.com that's fantastic and as far as the conference goes if you're <clears throat> excuse me my throat just got dry i talk too much hence the trailer the if you want to go i know the conference is sold out but there is a waiting list and if you want to go send me your best sob story about why you should go Send it to me at msergeant23 at comcast.net. I will make sure it absolutely gets to the conference organizers and they will determine where to go from there. So you're not out entirely. You might have a way back in. It's possible. Keep hope alive. I've heard that somewhere. Moving on. Phone number is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. This email is called Coach from Cheers. How about Family Ties, too? Hi, Mark. Two quick things. Nike's Cheers video. Family Ties also mentions Flat Earth in an episode. I was unable to get a screenshot from the actual episode for you, but I have included a link from the script. Yeah, most people don't know. You can actually download the script to just about every television show ever, ever made. It's out there, a transcript. If you can't find the vid, let me know. Uh, if the link is bad, search the site for Season 1, Episode 13, Big Brother is Watching. Yeah, also, Season 1. Also, I personally was involved with the installation of over 800 cell tower sites over eight years. I can tell you that they are all ground-based using antennas to pass signals everywhere. These links are what I worked with and installed. No satellites at all, ever. I never found any references to so-called satellites, ever. The setup was all Ethernet backbone tied into the building's cabling. This equipment is in department store closets, an office on the 25th floor, and across the street at the back of a local bank, etc., etc. Keep up the great work. And he sends me the link to the Family Ties vid, and that's fantastic. That's great. Yeah, and I actually put that in a thing. And, of course, copyrighted. You know, that's fine. It also helps if you, if you reverse flip it, but not blocked, Trailer Park Boys. You you hear what I'm talking? Somebody, if anyone talks to the Trailer Park Boys, tell them to freaking um, tell them to lighten up, or at least hire a different inter, uh, different guy. I don't know who this Kevin guy is out there. He's horrible. Uh, let's see here. Peanut Gallery has a couple of quotes. This one's nope. He doesn't have quotes. Where do? You, I'm sorry, it doesn't scroll down automatically. Uh oh, he's gonna do some stuff. Your experiment needs to just... Oh, okay, here's a bunch of quotes that he, he left. You cannot teach a man anything. You can only help him discover it in himself. That was said by Galileo. And a phone call comes in. Can we get it? 970. Here we go. 970, you were on live with Strange World. It's 4th of July. What's going on? Hello? Hey. Nine, seven, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> What's going on in Colorado? Hey, um, just have a question for you in regards to um, maps and like 
you know, Google Maps and um, like, you know, supposed satellite like stuff going on there. Yeah. Um, why is it? Why is it that you can be driving on the road and it can tell you exactly, you know, what's going on? I mean, I know you say it's like towers or whatever, but I mean, yeah. is that just it? Like the towers are that advanced they can pick up on traffic and all that? Oh yeah, I mean, you got to remember the tech that we've got. This the general civilian tech is way better than it used to be even 20 years ago. So that using because you can use cell phone towers for all sorts of fun stuff. And remember, it's you, you get a financial benefit. You can you can get paid for having a cell tower put up on your property. So they're they're everywhere, and you can use those to triangulate everything. And all the people I've talked to, like that one email I just read. It, that was one of several people in the cell phone industry who've hooked up towers, and they all said the same thing. They all triangulate based on the cell towers, and that's that's all you need. Yeah, technically, they can say GPS, and they can put a sticker on it that says GPS, but it doesn't mean they're using satellites to pinpoint you. And it makes a lot more sense anyway, because a lot of people need to track their phones. So, anyway. So, what, a, what about the fact that the images that we see on Google Earth or whatever um, you're looking at, they're so. I mean, that that can't just be planes. I mean, that's it. Just seems well, way too. It, it, is a, it doesn't have know, to be just planes. Just Think about so. it this way. Think of how Google Maps, when they're doing like the street maps. You know, you if you've ever seen the the stupid mm -hmm. camera things that are on top of cars, driving around. Yeah, it takes a while to get you know to get some good images. Sometimes it's bad weather. Sometimes they malfunction. Now, yeah, you could put some on civilian planes. That would that would that would do fine. But mm -hmm. you could also put a whole bunch on balloons, and just have them start floating around. Because remember, they're not moving as fast as planes, so you don't have to have a, a sure. nearly as high resolution if you didn't want to. Plus, they also can get upwards. You can keep them stable at a hundred thousand feet, and then you just wait for the clouds to clear, and voila, you can take some really really nice pictures. And who's to say, depending on how far back you pull. What's the difference between taking a picture at 100,000 feet of the ground, if you stitch it together with other images, versus something that you claim is 100 miles, you know, which is 500,000 feet? Sure. Yeah. It's, you can do a lot with <laughs> lower altitude images. It's, it's, not, it's not as tricky as you might think. So, again, we don't have eyes yeah. like, like – we, we personally yeah, exactly. don't have – so I'm just saying it's not, it's not that hard. Yeah, commercial flights can do some of it. Balloons can do some of it. It's uh, you can do a lot with the tech that we have, and yeah, and, and yes, cell towers can absolutely triangulate. Because remember, that's what the that's what the towers are there for in the first place. Are your phones, and really, and your car GPS system, if anyone yeah. even still uses those damn things anymore, they're just a glorified version of that. So, hopefully, that helps. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. I mean, I. I was just curious because, I mean, you see such great images when you look at Google Maps. You know, oh, I, I know. I've, I've looked into, like, past areas where I forgot, like, you know, what street I was on. So I just look it up by looking at what the house actually looks like. Oh, know, sure. Sure. Crazy. But remember, but, uh, most, yeah. most, people, most people don't care. I mean, yeah, when you zoom, zoom in, you can, yeah, most people care when you get down to the, what, not even 5,000 foot level. That's where most people are zooming in from or 1,000 feet or whatever it is. Then, but when you get out, when you pull back, when you use your mouse scroller and you pull back to or your phone or whatever, and you pull back to a certain altitude, the image becomes really more of an artist illustration, or it becomes so generic that it could be taken from just about anything. You know, the the view from let's put it this way: the view from thirty thousand feet from a plane is one thing. You know, we've all flown on planes, but the view from a hundred thousand feet looks mm -hmm. a lot like what they're passing off as. It's something that's in orbit, and that just isn't the case anymore. I mean, I used to even blame blame spy planes, but why spend the money on spy planes when you can just hook them up to balloons? So, it's that's crazy. Uh, people actually still trust anything going on with NASA because you know you look well, into like just different images that they have from like monitors, and yeah. you can see like actual you know pictures where it's it's literally taken from like the Arizona. Desert, oh yeah whatever you know like yeah. they actually have side by side and they're like oh yeah this is on earth <laughs> it's not well, on mars remember that you as well i mean you even as little as three years ago you believed everything that nasa told you because they come off mm, as 
Well, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Forget about the moon mission. That's a piece of crap. But you got to remember their image is very is very polished. They wear white uniforms. They don't carry weapons. They always smile for the camera and give all these supposedly completely transparent press conferences. And it's very, you know, they and they're they're supposedly the face of science. They're the 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 front man and the band that is science. Why would they ever lie to you? That is yeah, that's and they might as well just they don't say that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know. I was just gonna say supposedly, but the fact is that uh, you have that video that you uh, just recently uploaded with Buzz Aldrin, oh, and yeah. the guy looks ridiculous. Like yeah. his facial his facial reactions don't even make any sense to me. Well, I mean, yeah. they do, but you know, he shouldn't be doing that if they're supposedly the face. No, no. You're it like, was, sorry, the face of, you know, the government space agency. Yeah, it's, the, it's one of the first times, and I don't care who's been up there behind a president or any politician, most people that are standing to the side. I mean, this is acting 101, right? You freeze. You don't do anything. And he did the exact opposite. He was responding to, exactly. I know, I've heard rumors that he drinks, but that makes it even worse. It's like, he obviously, you know, there's something, <laughs> on, that, something on that guy's mind. And uh, it was all on camera. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I have no idea what's going on there, but yeah. it's pretty funny. I mean, I, I've also seen the old ones where they're all, you know, gathered around, you know, after they've just supposedly come back from the moon and they look like they've seen a ghost or something. I don't know. But, oh, well, yeah, that crap. Uh, well, usually... There's a, of, yeah. there's a lot of great stuff out there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I'm going to try to take one more before the break. Do you... Any, any shout-outs you want to give before we send you off into the night of the 4th of July? No, I just... I appreciate the way that you handle the show. I mean, I think nice. you're really uh, a great, a great guy. So um, just yeah. keep it up. You know, I, you know, I, I mean, I know it's, it's hard, but you know, just make sure, I don't know. I have, I've listened to you for a long time. So well, I thanks. Really appreciate it. Thank you. No, thank you very much. And I'm not going to quit until I'm dead. So, you know, well, I, I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not stopping. This thing is, this thing's got way too much momentum and I want to see where it leads. I'm curious more than anybody. Yeah, no, no kidding. Well, good luck all your way, and I'll all probably right. call back again sometime. All right, man. Have a good one. Right. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And I was reading quotes from Peanut Gallery before he decided to leave me for some reason. So here's another one. If your experiment needs statistics, you ought to have done a better experiment. Ernest Rutherford. Trial by combat of wits in disputations has no attraction for the seeker after truth. To him, the appeal to experiment is the last and only test of the merit of an opinion, conjecture, or hypothesis. hypothesis. That's from Joseph Meller. Measure what can be measured and make measurable what cannot be measured. That's from Galileo. And last but not least, science is as corruptible as human activity as any other. That's from Michael Crichton, the author. Very good author, actually. I loved uh, just most of Michael's stuff. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I need to get to. Oh, there's more. Sorry. If you thought the science was certain, well, that it's just an error on your part. That's from Richard Feynman. Much public thinking follows a rut. The same thing is true in science. People get stuck and don't look in other directions. That's from Charles Towns. And we live in a society exquisitely dependent on science and technology in which hardly anyone knows anything about science and technology. That's by Carl Sagan. And no, I'm not going to sing the Joe Jackson thing. I'm not going to do it. Somebody else just called in. Let's see if we can pick these guys up. 701 area code. We have about two minutes till the break. What do you got? Uh, wow. North Dakota, can you hear me? Dude, yeah. I can't. I, I, I cannot hear you very well. Can you hear me? I can't hear you at all. I'll have to hang up. <laughs> okay. Call back after the break, okay? Don't know where that guy was calling from, but that's okay. 
Uh, let's see here. If there's anything. We got one more minute to the break. Let's pick up one more email. Well, maybe two. This one's really short. This one's called Math Powerland? Question mark. Who the heck was that guy on the newscast? Because it wasn't Math Powerland. Oh, geez, that email's going all the way back to when IPS actually said Math's name. No, that was Infinite Plain Society using Math's name because Math has a more popular channel on YouTube than he does. Unfortunately, Matt did not like that very much, and so now Matt hates IPS and everything about him, which, to me, you know, anyone's out there, Matt should lighten up. Uh, if, you, if you could see what, what IPS was doing, it was pretty transparent. Apparently, Matt and his ego did not see that, though. And no, I'm not going to hold back on Matt. He's, he deserves everything that's coming to him. Uh, real quick, let's see how much time we got. Uh, 30 seconds. Can I get through this? Can I get through this? Mark, I was watching the documentary The Global Lie. Something struck me about 25 minutes in when they were covering the structural makeup of our world. They mentioned the Sheol. Well, the Sheol is basically the dark underworld, but the picture reminded me of oil. Then I thought, wait a minute, let's break down that word. So I looked up oil. It's an etymology refers to the world oil. Isn't it ironic we seem to be waging war in the lands where the great war of the Battle of Armageddon seems destined? Coincidence? Rob Skiba can be quoted saying that his mother always said that coincidence is God's way of speaking or something to that effect. Weird and creepy. That's Scott Rodriguez sent from his iPhone. That's awesome. No, oh, I'm back. Got one more segment. Tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from deception. TLR. Truth Frequency Radio. Wow, I missed my thing. The uh, Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. Yes, Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. You guys know that by now, right? Phone number to call in, last chance, last segment, July 4th, is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And the reason why I missed my thing is I was typing a note to... Patricia Steer, who I already did a show with yesterday, and I will put it up on my channel tomorrow. So for those of you who are looking for a live show with Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes tomorrow with me, will not be there. I don't know if she has a guest tomorrow. So she still may have a show tomorrow, but I'm not going to be on it. But I highly encourage you to watch her show nonetheless. Emails, emails. Who's got the emails? I do. This one's called Update on Colorado Flat Earth Billboard Campaign. Please help. Can you... Let's see here. Uh, bill, billboard. Updated section for billboard location. GoFundMe.com Flat Earth Colorado. There's an updated section for billboard location, cost goals, and returns of funds policy. Please help us spread the word. We would like to reserve space for August 2017 during the Colorado vacation season. I am available for radio interview. If you have time, you think this would help. Call me anytime. We are very excited about this getting this accomplished. With thanks and gratitude, John Vanuck. And John, actually, if you're listening, uh, not tonight, but maybe next time, maybe not next week. Oh, as a matter of fact, I should probably tell you guys that. That's a good thing to update you guys on. And that is next week may be a rerun. Maybe, because I've got to handle some family medical things where I am taking a family member to the hospital. And I'm going to be spending the night uh, next to the hospital. So, and it's not me, you know, I'm, but it's it's kind of important. So I may or may not get back. I'm, I'm doing that Monday night, so I may or may not get there, depending on the ferry line, coming back to the island on Tuesday for the show. So if you hear a rerun... Don't freak out. I'm not dead or anything. Spread the word around. What happened to Mark? Did they get him? Did they get him? Is it Illuminati confirmed? No. 
don't. But I, but I might make it. You never know. This one's called The Speed of Earth. Hi, Mark. Thanks for your awesome video. Under the Dome, I avoided the subject of the Flat Earth for about a year, but the truth just can't be kept hidden. Here is one that I have not seen or heard mentioned in any of the videos, but then again, I still have hundreds more to watch. If the Earth is actually going around its axis with a 24-hour cycle, NASA says that at the equator, you would be traveling over a 1,000 miles per hour, and of course, as you get closer to the poles, you would be getting slower, say 700 miles an hour. In fact, even slower. Honestly, remember, if it's, if it's a pure globe, if you're standing on top of the North Pole, you're spinning at nothing, just so you know. At any speed, any picture they took of the Earth from outer space would be blurry, but they are not. Uh, depends. I mean, with high resolution stuff we have now, no, that's not the case. You would, you'd be able to take pictures and just about any speeds much faster. But back in the sixties, good point. Interesting. Thank you for waking me up again. Anne Irvin. Very welcome. Anne. happy to accommodate you. This one's called, what's this one called? This one's from Rush Order Tees. Dennis shared a design with you. So Rush Order Tees, he sent me a thing that says Earth is flat. Globe is, it's in reverse. Globe is bad. Globe is, yeah, globe is bad, I think. Earth is flat, globe is bad. That was his design he sent. Awesome. Hi, Mark. I would like to introduce my spontaneous design idea for a t-shirt. I'm interested to do more designs for Flat Earth. Maybe you'll advise me the real deal sites to do that when people really see and can buy their t-shirts. Best regard, your subscriber. Cool. Awesome. And that's really, really great. This one's called SpaceX CRS-11 CGI. Hello, Mark. Thanks for opening my eyes. Seems like the SpaceX June landing with CGI. The water puddles, question mark. I live here in Florida. Any water on concrete quickly dries up, even faster around a rocket booster, I bet. That's from Hartley. And the video is called, if you guys want to look it up, it's called SpaceX CRS-11 Falcon 9 Landing, June 2017. CGI and water puddle. You know what? I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And I'm going to type in, since I got them in here, don't forget to put flat earth in the title. I missed this and I think others did too. There you go. It's my words of wisdom for the day. Now, moving on. This one's called Hey Mark. Mark, I thought you might want to check out this video. It's insane. A guy by the name of something like Flat Earth Arab made it. It's a giant underwater wall going over the entire Earth. Nuts. It's really impressive. I've heard people say that it's a Google Earth glitch, but if you notice from the video, every time there's a break in the wall, very symmetrical break, by the way, you can see a path going through that break as though it were a gate or a river tributary of some kind. Seems legit. <laughs> I love that term. Uh, well, in fact, it's, it, that term is, has only come up because of the whole hashtag thing. It seems legit. Thanks, Mark. P.S. My wife and I have relocated in the Seattle area. What a beautiful town. Awesome. It's really, really great. And you can see that there's a thing on Disclosed TV. It's called Bizarre. There's a colossal underwater wall encompassing the entire globe. Look that up. You will find it. Great. Love little tips. This one's called Observation. Mark, I live in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, central time zone. I catch a bus going east every morning, 6 o'clock crossing the Mississippi from Minneapolis to St. Paul. The direction I'm headed in would be 12 o'clock. The sun is coming from 11 o'clock from north towards the south. My perspective is that the sun is low and coming up, so it's further away. I get home in the evening around 1700. That's 5 o'clock, by the way. And looking to the west, west being 12 o'clock, the sun is coming from the south and the north. It's obviously much closer because it seems higher in the sky, but it's definitely going away from south to north. Knowing what I know now, it's so obvious that the path of the sun is much closer to the center of the earth. All these years, this makes much more sense. It would probably make a lot more sense to the viewers, except it's a radio program, and I don't have any visuals to throw at you, and this guy didn't throw any visuals at me. But like where his head's at. Awesome. Super great. This one's called Flat Earth Poetry Videos, an info about Flat Earth creation. This was sent to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes and myself. Hi, Patricia and Mark. I enjoy watching The Secret Show very much. Thanks for all the time you put into that show 
and your other interviews and your channels. You've created a wonderful community. I've been working on Flat Earth Poetry videos. Ooh, phone call might come in here. And just posted some on my channel, my first video ever. I was inspired and had a lot of fun putting these together. I'd be super happy if you would watch and share them. Here are the links. Hi and meow to War Rory, Flynn, and Greer. Also, I thought you might be interested in hearing about a researcher, Rita Louise, who wrote Man Made, the Chronicles of Our Extraterrestrial Gods. You've probably heard of her. In some of her interviews, she goes on goes out on wild, entertaining tangents. She researches similarities between mythological stories of world cultures and posts posits the gods of myth being one real set of historical beings that probably technological powers who created our reality. She talks about different epochs of time, worlds created by eight original progenitors who created the Titans, monkey men, giants and men in different worlds. During one of the worlds, they create habitable land by churning up oxygen from the ocean into the atmosphere and place the sun, moon and stars into the sky. The monkey men built the land bridge to Sri Lanka in my mind, at least, this seems to tie into the Fly Earth creation. I found fascinating. Here are the links to what I watched, if you're interested. Keep it flat and thanks. Elspeth Awake. Did we get a phone call while I was waiting? We did. Let's see what's happening. This one, 701 area code from North Dakota, I believe. Are you there, 701? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? I can. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, okay. I tried to call earlier, but you sounded like you were underwater, and so I had I said I had to call back. Who knows? Who knows? Hard to say. I'm in a submarine currently, yeah. but well, that usually doesn't affect the sound quality. <laughs> well, it's probably my fault too. I am. I am with uh, uh, my husband and I are the truck drivers from Washington, but right now I'm in Amarillo, Texas, and there's a big, huge, bigger than life uh, thunderstorm fireworks going on, and lightning and people are putting off their fireworks as well so awesome in, in the rain and <laughs> unusual so that's probably the reason why i couldn't get through very long that's probably it yeah so what's uh what's uh what's on your mind oh i i, I haven't called in for a while and i was uh kind of curious about something if you had um come across this or have seen any more information. I was listening to a Zen Garcia um, uh, archive show the other day, and he was talking about the, um, the big hole. It's supposed to be the North Pole that's stuck in the water from the ocean that, that breathes them out again every six hours. And I'm just wondering if you've heard about that or... Did, I had I had not. I Zen writes a lot of stuff. In fact, I may be maybe attending his debate that he's having with Dr. Stephen Pigeon down in Atlanta, Georgia this summer. Next month, as yeah. a matter of fact. Uh -huh. But I haven't I have I have not heard that one. So but that's very, very interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just a couple episodes back, uh, I guess it was not last week, but the week before. Um and he talked about it from descriptions of from ancient text and so my question if I could ever get a hold of Zen Garcia though I don't know I have to, I have to you know, email him but I was just curious if you had come across that there's apparently a, a big gaping hole and there's actually a video on YouTube at one point that showed some sort of a whirlpool at the North Pole if somebody thinks it's you know, a, more, a more modern version from an airplane or an aircraft of some sort and very odd very strange yeah. Hmm. I so mean, there's always legends saying that these rivers are coming out from that, and right. So you know, if, if NASA and the world can lie to us about the true shape of the world and Antarctica and all that, who's to say they're not lying about what's actually up in the North Pole? Oh, sure, sure. And you remember the Admiral Byrd thing ties into that as well. Which is that's where he went yeah. first was the North Pole in 1926, and Supposedly found something, but whatever it was, it only held his interest for a very short time because then he spent the rest of his life, 1928, until his death in 1957 in Antarctica. Right, right. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, this would be some really... You want to have some fun, though, if you're if you're looking up stuff. Have you heard or read... Let's see if I can out-trivia you. Okay, have you heard of the... You know, everyone knows the Admiral Byrd thing up in the North Pole, but did you ever hear of the story that Charles Lindbergh 
also went to the North Pole after Admiral I, Byrd. Yeah. Okay. Have you heard that one? Um, yes, I know he went. Yeah, I know he went up to the North Pole, but I don't. I haven't really researched it. Look, look into that. Like, look know. into the conspiracy behind that, okay. where he, you know, because pilots are are huge competitors, and that he went up there and he saw the same thing that Admiral Byrd did, only he took pictures and wanted to release them, and the government didn't oh. want him to. And when he was claiming, right. it's like, look, I'm going to release them. I don't care what, what you say. That all of a sudden segued yeah. into the Lindbergh baby story. And as you know, the Lindbergh, oh. baby, Lindbergh baby died. And then for whatever reason, Charles yeah. Lindbergh renounced his citizenship of the United States and left and never came back. Went to yeah. Europe. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'll look into that. Um, because if you found the same thing, and I think that, that video, that short little clip I saw, it was like a vintage um, film. Um, so it, it was very odd. It was this big, big, huge, gigantic whirlpool with the well, send, water send, if, going into it. If you get a chance, one side of it. email me that link. I'd love to see it. Uh-huh. Send that to me. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll do all that. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, that's about all I have to say. Um, other than, you know, we're just going across the country and we'll be back to Washington next week. Uh-huh. Right on. Right on. Hey, you know what? Stay yeah. flat and, dr- and drive safe. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. All okay. right. You know, have a good fourth the rest of the night. And, All right. You... Um, yeah, be flat, too. All right. Have a good one. See ya. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And operators are standing by. By that I mean me. So when you call, don't be mean. Because remember, no matter where you go, there you are. All right. One more set of emails and maybe we'll take a call. we got a few more minutes before the show ends. This one's called Where to Go From Here. Nope. Phone call may have been coming in right now. Let's see if it bounces in. And sticks. Yep. Like throwing Gum against a wall. There's 808. Let's pick up 808. And that's that's Hawaii. I'm jealous. All right, Hawaii. Are you actually calling from Hawaii? 808? Yes, sir. Aloha, Mark. Aloha. What time is it out there in Hawaii? The sun hasn't even gone down there, has it? No, the sun is still up and um, it's about 545. I said, let me get a call in before... Your program yeah, was open. Oh, yeah. I wish you aloha. Aloha. What's uh, what's what's on your mind? What's happening out there? Well, I saw this uh, YouTube video about the civilian rocket. I believe uh, SpaceX that went up seventy-two miles. Um, may have been SpaceX. And I wonder may if have been. You saw that? Yeah, I did see one of them. Yeah. And it was rotating rapidly. And it hit something, then it sounded like a plop, and then all of a sudden the rapid motion stopped, and it just started going slower. Yeah, I, I know this Did video. You, you saw that? Yeah, yeah, I have seen it, and there's been different... And I was just... Yeah, you want to know my, my take? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I'm i a little skeptical of it. I mean, yeah, the rotation thing, I saw. I know what you're talking about. It spins very, very fast on the way up. And then it seems to slow down for whatever reason. Now, could it be slow? You know, could they have slowed down the footage? Possibly. Could they add a sound effect? Maybe. Although, uh, it very well could have hit something. I, it's hard to say. Because here's here's the only reason I'm skeptical. When, if you believe in the United States military, and I know I should never ever say those words, but if you believe in the high altitude nuclear testing that they did from 1958 to 1962, the lowest shots that they were firing up there, were something like 50, 60 miles, but the highest ones were over 400. So with that in mind, I don't know if a rocket going from America, because that's still, that's the inner circle, which means it would have been, you know, if, if you believe in the dome, it would have been up way higher than out at the edge, out of the far outer marker. I don't know if it would have slowed down and stopped at 60 or 70 miles. Who knows? It's very, very possible that it did, but I like the rocket footage as a concept because it puts it in people's head. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And a movie like that, 
at least gives people the concept that of what could happen in a dome, because I don't believe it's a hard structure. I believe there's probably some negative physics involved because we do that in simulations now, meaning so instead of remember, because the rocket, you know, if it hit something solid, the camera would have just died because it would, you know, that rocket going really, really fast. The thing would just crushed against it like a car going against a brick wall at a thousand miles an hour. But if you throw a negative physics, what happens is it just slows it down. It's like you're going against a, all of a sudden a hurricane's coming from the other direction and you slow down, you slow down, you slow down, but, but there's no damage. So it, that, that could have been it too. I, I, we call it kind of like a soft barrier in the video game world. And I don't know. I maybe, I mean, it's, it's still a good vid. I, I like it. And it's, it's gotten a lot of hits and been mirrored a whole bunch of times, but I think we need more, we need more, more, more videos to, to make it conclu conclusive. Yes, I um. Let's just say that I've done some uh, parachuting from about fifteen thousand feet, and I've seen very far in the distance. And it's not until listening to you that I ever thought about the curvature, but my memory was very vivid. And I just remember seeing for so far. I was in uh, southern Florida, and I was able to see the entire peninsula. Oh yeah. Boat. Uh, yeah. The both pilots all say pi like, pilots all say the same thing, which is. They're up at 30,000 feet, and they see nothing but a completely flat horizon. Every pilot sees this, but they don't. it doesn't register in their head because they were told since they were small children that it's a globe, even though they're seeing it flat every time they go up. And they're so busy with other things, but it doesn't click. It's like, well, what if it is flat? And then they, you know, then they, it's like, wow, that's crazy talk. And then they do whatever, you know, talk to the stewardesses or whatever it is. And they, they just, it doesn't, they don't give it a second thought. Wow. Well, you know, that, that was my main one that okay. I had, but then I had a second question about, sure. um, had you read the book Zetetic Astronomy? I've heard about it many times. I've kind of glanced through it a little bit, but no, I have not sat down and, and, and read it entirely. No. Because I was wondering if there was a modern day, maybe some of your listeners that might have read it and kind of brought it up to date. It's, it's kind of antiquated. Um, not yet. He... And, uh, I got the first 20 pages. <laughs> nice. The, uh, okay, because it, it's really wonderful. Um, like practical stuff that, you know, it's like, wow, this is really well thought out of. Uh, nobody's updated that book yet. I, I know Eric DeBay made some, made some stuff and Zen Garcia's working stuff, but his stuff is from a Christian angle and Rob Skiba, same sort of thing. But everybody in our community has really been focusing on the videos more than anything. Because unfortunately, books, even the eBooks aren't nearly as receptive as, you know, people just don't have the attention span. Which is why, like, YouTube is replacing all television because people can't even sit still for a 30 minute show. But oh, yeah, they'll sit for a five, 10 minute video. And then, of course, they watch 20 of them. It's, it's odd. It's a weird paradox, but uh, it, it works for us. I don't know if anyone's going to update that thing soon. Um, there's, I think I've got a, do I have another call coming in? Uh, one second. Nope, he didn't make it. I may have to drop you, though, in a, uh, a minute because I'm going to try to take one more call if it comes in, though, before the end of the show. Any, anything else you had? Well, just um, saying aloha to all the flat earthers out there in the world and Hawaii, and um, keep up the good work, brother Mark. Keep right, right work. on. And and hey, uh, maybe there'll be a flat Earth meetup coming in Hawaii soon. You never know. We've had a lot of them recently. Yeah. Well, I look forward. I'll keep listening to your show, and uh, okay. I'll be there. All right, man. All right. Hey, you have a good rest of your afternoon and evening in Hawaii. Mahalo and aloha. All right. <laughs> See ya. All right. Last chance for anyone to call in. You got four minutes. Oh, there's somebody. Let's see who this guy is. Let's see if he made it in. Uh, nope. He hung up just as he was coming in. I know there's a little bit of a delay. So when you guys are listening to it on TFR, you may think I'm still talking to somebody, but I'm not. And they're back. Maybe. We'll find out. Six one two. Wait a minute. Do I know this number? Six one two area code. Have you called in already tonight? Yeah, I had to call in again so I could stop you uh, from reading another email. Uh, well, now, now you're going to have to make an email video. Uh, 
serious. I'm sorry, Mark. Go back to your thing. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's all right. I, I in fact, I was. No, it's it, it. Zulu and I were just playing around with you, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna call him in right now. <laughs> you're you're actually live on my. Oh, so. thanks. Thank you. Thank just you. have. Right. All right. Did have 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 are you guys talking about how eventually you're gonna come out of the closet and tell everybody that you've been dating for the last couple of years? <laughs> yeah, no, we're gonna hide that a little okay, longer. Good. Yo, well, well again, you know, it's just between us. Just you know, I'd I'd probably hide it for now. <laughs> right, right, definitely. So anyhow, well, when you're done, when you're done, you could pop in if you got time. I I will try. I will. We'll see though. I I'm there's a couple of other things I'm I, I I will have to do, but I will try. Okay. All right. Later, dater. Okay. See you, man. All right. Can I get one more email? I got two minutes to do it. Can I do it? Let's. You know, we'll end with this cool one, which is called "Where do we go from here." Mr. Sergeant, first, I would like to genuinely thank you for uh, offering what has been the most enlightening yet flat earth shattering truth I have ever discovered for three months. I have done nothing but research flat earth. When I began this long journey, I knew I was on the road of discovering the truth that I've been researching my whole life. I've always felt there was something off about NASA. But they were keeping vital information from us. I grew up with a mom whose main hobby is astronomy. She set up her Celestron telescope almost nightly and got my brother and I deep into astronomy, teaching us all about the planets, galaxies, and constellations. I wrote a 20-page research paper on black holes in 10th grade. Everything about outer space intrigued me. So when I began researching this idea, it was heartbreaking but also made me uh, breathe a sigh of relief to know that I didn't have those feelings for nothing. I was in love with the idea of everything that was fed to me, but something in my gut told me there was way more to it. So here's my question to you. As I started in the sub stated in the subject line, where do I go from here? The past couple of weeks, I've been struggling to really even function in my day-to-day -day life. It's very overwhelming to know what I know, but not to be able to figure out the question of why and how. When does the sick feeling that stems from being lied to, fooled, and trolled end? I'm finding it more and more difficult to just continue on in my daily life knowing these things, and it makes me sick that everyone around me believes these liars and what they feed us every day on Facebook, Instagram, IFLS, etc. I want to be proactive and do something to let this anxiety and frustration out, but I'm not sure what to do. I'm sure you went through this early on in your research, so any advice, feedback, suggestions are welcome. Thank you for your time, Carly. And, and not that Carly, another Carly. I'm pretty sure anyway the uh yeah and i will i will write back to her and and tell her but to you guys look it's a process like everything else the outrage is natural you will go through that it's the five stages really and that is denial followed by anger followed by bargaining followed by depression followed by final acceptance it is a journey through a tunnel which you will emerge and by the time you get to the other side you will be filled with hope and optimism and promise and all the great things that come with a brand new world. So with that, let's wrap up the show. Treat others better than you treat yourself. The world will be a better place. Flat Earth and other hot potatoes has a show tomorrow. I will not be on it, but she's doing some other stuff. And keep looking at my channel on YouTube, which is called Mark K. Sargent. If you can't remember that, just type in Flat Earth. That's it. How about that? Wrapped up pretty nicely. Anyway, see you guys next time. Same flat time. Same flat channel. Evie, what is this? What is this? Mm -hmm. is, the, is that a model of the flat geocentric Earth? <laughs> I had to make a new one. What are you doing? <laughs>